Okay, um, I figured out why this um, here was not working. So remember that um, I kind of got caught in my own, um, I, I, I went against my own cautions and rules and I didn't check something. So right here, this paragraph mark, it has a point size of 12, right? And nothing else, if you notice, has a point size of 12. This is nine, this is eight and a half, um, this is nine. So I'm assuming that I really don't need a 12 point line break. I'm gonna make this nine and look at that. Everything falls into place immediately. So I really just needed this paragraph mark to be um, nine points and not 12. Just having that invisible mark, a different size for my text was throwing off everything that I was doing. And a lot of times uh, somebody who's a beginner and doesn't know how to work this stuff would just kind of try to compensate around it without really fixing the tiny little thing that would make all the difference and make everything um, easy. Now, if I hadn't fixed it, I might have wanted to just delete it. That didn't work. I might have wanted to delete this. That didn't work. I might have wanted to extend the box. Well, that would have worked, but it wouldn't have really been correct. Like, what if other things happened because this box was bigger than it was supposed to be? So the solution was just really to troubleshoot and to find that error and to make this uh, invisible mark uh, nine points. Okay. So this gives us gets us to a pretty good spot. I'm going to just save my file, by the way, because uh, I'm sorry, I haven't saved it yet, which is also a very good idea. Let's save it here on my desktop. I've been too wrapped up in trying to make these videos and I didn't save. All right, so everything looks pretty good, right? Um, now, if you notice that if you look at the text, it's not in the right place yet because remember our other markup? We need to put in all these boxes. So they will create text wrap. They will push the text out of the way and to the right place. So really we're, we need to be on this sheet now. Um, okay, so I think I mentioned this before, we're gonna to try to get the line breaks to be exactly like they would be in the final. So we want to have these exact line breaks, right? In, in the real world, like when you're working on a job, it's really an aesthetic decision. There really usually isn't a specific way to run line breaks that somebody's really gonna insist on. But I want you to know how to do it correctly, so we're going to stick to the example and try to match it. If you remember just previously, I already showed it before, but you want to highlight all this. You want to go into the text tool control palette and go into the composer options and you want to choose Adobe single line composer. Because if you were an Adobe paragraph composer, and I'll show you, I'll show you why, um, you could see the text moving a little bit. So in Adobe, um, if I choose this font in Adobe Paragraph Composer, if I choose this font, it's not doing it now, but it will rerun. There it is. You see how I'm I'm kerning this, tracking this. Sorry, I'm starting to get a little tired. Tracking this back in, you can see that other things move. Like you'll see this the is going to jump up here. Now you didn't ask it to do it, so. Adobe uh, Paragraph Composer is compensating for what you're doing to create the best um, line breaks that it can calculate. So whenever you move something in Adobe Paragraph Composer, it will adjust other parts of the paragraph. And for, sometimes it's really, really useful to have it do that. But in this case, we don't want it to do that because we want to have control. So select this whole thing. Don't You can do it to this paragraph, but you don't have to because it's already done. Um, and select Adobe Single Line Composer, which gives you control over how you choose to do the lines. Okay, now we're actually ready to put in our text boxes or picture boxes, sorry.
or whatever boxes, doesn't really matter, they're just boxes. Um, I'm going to close this because we no longer really need that. I'm going to close this because we already chose the text and now we're just going to focus on this. Okay, so we'll start with the easy thing first. Oops, I'm going to close my tab palette as well. Um, so a box, we're just going to take a generic box. If you, This is a picture box. Um, this is a rectangle tool, it doesn't matter. As long as you make a box, you can convert it later. It, it really doesn't matter in InDesign. So we're going to pull out a box. Remember, you can make boxes any which way. I'm going to make it black. I just reversed. It had a stroke on it. I'm going to reverse that, make it black. And I'm just going to put in these parameters, right? I can I can make the box any any size. I can put it anywhere. It doesn't really matter. As long as I put in these parameters, it'll just become that. Oh, something I hadn't mentioned. We did talk about this in class, and I should mention it. Everything um, is orients to the upper left reference point. So if you have this set up anywhere else, you would have probably had some problems by now. Um, but just um, there's going to be a couple exceptions where we're rotating things. That's why I'm bringing it up now because it reminded me we're going to be rotating some boxes, but uh, basically the left origin, upper, upper left um, origin point is the standard reference. Okay, x5, y, 0.5 it's already moving and we have 2.304 and we have 2.322 okay and there it is it looks pretty good um, with boxes since you don't have the text it's a little bit strange they're all kind of floating on the page so you can always refer to this and and see how it's doing it's, it looks pretty good So next box, picture box. Um, all right, so now we're going to be dealing with something called text trap. Text trap is when you force the text to run around the box. So when I make this box, just gonna switch the color. Um, you can see that it overlays the text, but we don't want this. And again, it's not the right size. It's not in the right place. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put in all these parameters. Um, Okay, we have the x coordinate of 3.8, we have the y coordinate of 4.525, and we have the width of 0.75, and the height of 1. Well, it's still not looking like it's supposed to look. It looks quite different. But we know that it's close to correct. Um, the next thing we're missing is text trap. Text trap bounding box 0 0.013 in all. What does that even mean? Okay, so um, in your box tools, there is text trap options in the control panel menu, and um, you can use them, but they don't give you as much options as if you're actually in the text frame, in the text wrap menu. So when you go into window and you go into text trap, it brings up the text wrap menu. So I would recommend really doing that uh, rather than using these options, which uh, are more limited um, for these purposes. And you give the box a text trap. You see immediately the text runs around the box. The question is how much is the text running around the box? Well, if you really increase this boundary, do you see how it kind of grows? It's the offset. You can push the text quite far away from the box, but Really, most often you want it to be very minimal. In this case, you want it to be 0 0.0139. And it says in all, which means all around. So all these um, offsets are linked. So it's automatically going to be 0 0.0139. Um, and here's your box. And now it's starting to look a lot more like the box that you want to have. There's a little bit of an issue with the box. Now, there's um, the box is sitting slightly in the wrong place. You see like here, you can see the box is aligned with the top of the X height and the bottom of the baseline of the text. Here, it doesn't quite do that. I think that the markup is a little bit off and you kind of just want to always align it that way. 
um, regardless. So I like to pull out guides from the rulers. You can pull out guides. And you can just nudge that box down to those guides. And if it doesn't fit just exactly exactly, you can actually just close it a tiny bit. Optically, it's not going to make any difference, but it does create very even white space between the lines, and it doesn't break the flow of the paragraph. Um, the alignment of the lines, the white line spacing, the leading is incredibly important, so you don't want a box to be like off like that and break that leading. You see, like it looks kind of disorganized up here if that happens. So you really want your box, whatever the specifications are, to sit along the X height and the bottom of the baseline. Otherwise, your layout will never look really tidy or organized or intentional. All right, well, this is now not going to change, right? We got the box in the right spot, and these lines are not going to run any differently unless we make them. So our next step is to really uh, match the line breaks. And there's a couple things to say about that that are very important. When you create line breaks um, and you want to shift a line break, the best way to do it is by using tracking. Because with tracking that is optically not visible, if you have any other changes, you're not going to notice how the um, text reruns. So, for example, uh, we check the lines from bin arrive but off goes onto this line. So we can force off to be on the next line by selecting this whole set, this whole text and expanding the kerning. Now up here, we're up to 40, and usually 40 is not so good. You wanna be plus or minus 20 is not optically noticeable. So I'm gonna to try to kick it back to 30. 30 didn't really work. I think we're stuck with 40 for these purposes. It's a little bit too open, but we're just going to uh, go with that for now. Um, I really wanted to play with it. I could try like 35 and it would actually make a difference. You see that actually closed up, but it kept off in the next line. Um, you can see a little bit of a difference, but it's still flowing pretty well. Um, Asia, popcorn, play, the ballet of and in needs to go to the next line. Now when I highlight, now I know I just need in on the next line, but I'm highlighting the whole line because if I spread the spacing out as little as possible over as much text as possible, I get a much, um, it's, it's a much more invisible um, adjustment. Now, a couple things to know about this. A lot of people would be tempted to not bother with the tracking and just go like, this. But first of all, that's a paragraph break and it has a space after after it. So we really wouldn't want to do this. There's another option where you hit shift return and shift return creates a line break. You can see the symbol for the line break without actually separating anything in the paragraph, which is okay and it's a great strategy, but then looks what look what happens if there's a text change by the client, which sometimes happens. Oh, my spelling is awful. My example's not working, guys. Uh, let me try something else. Let me... Um, what, what I want to show is that if I type... There we go. So I put in this word type. Now but look what happens. My type runs, right? It flows nicely into the next line. And then because I have a line break here, it becomes a gap. And it may be a gap that you don't notice if you are um, somewhere like, you know, a hundred page book, you may not notice this, but um, I'm just undoing all that. Um, but if I am using If I, if I track this out, select this option arrow keys, by the way, for tracking, option arrow keys, or you can use up here. So I track it out and I add some 
pipe here you see that it just flows naturally and nothing bad happens and you don't even notice it so that's why uh, line breaks are good to have in your pocket because they're much better than paragraph breaks to create the line um, adjustments that you want but very subtle tracking is even better than that so that's what I really like you to do here and form bin arrive series Asia popcorn play the ballet of AM pavilion that all works really really well this is a great time to save your document and move on to the next paragraph I'm going to stop here and do the rest of the paragraph in the next video